Hi guys, good morning. My name is Christophe Des. I'm a technical artist at Naughty Dog. I've been with Naughty Dog for the past uh, 10 years, which in our industry is like a lifetime. Um, today I was supposed to show you only the vehicle, but since I realized I talk very fast and uh, I didn't manage yesterday to show the weapon and the vehicle, I will do the same today. I will be going through the weapon that I did yesterday and the vehicle. Uh, before showing uh, the stuff from Naughty Dog, I will uh, show you as an introduction some of my personal work, which are the stuff that I do with uh, either Substance Painter or Substance Designer. I work mostly in Substance Painter nowadays, but I also used to work in Substance Designer. So those rendering have been done with, uh, have been textured with uh, Substance Painter. A little bit more. Uh, that one was actually done as a test for IRA in Substance Designer. Last, uh, last release of Substance Designer did bring IRA. That model was done completely in Substance Painter, modeled by my good friend Nick Sucarello. It's actually a great model. I did have a lot of fun texturing it. Um, that Iron Man was done in Substance Designer, modeled by my friend Olivier Couston. Uh, rendered in Redshift GPU. Actually, I wanted you to see those pictures for you to understand why I'm so passionate about IRA. Every picture I'm showing it right now, all of those renderings have been done on the GPU in, Mont in uh, Maya with a software called Redshift. Some might have been done with uh, Octane, which I don't use that much anymore. And later I will show you why I'm very excited about IRA. So those renderings have been done 100% in ZBrush and uh, Substance Designer. Actually, I was trying a workflow to do some uh, look dev. Um, what you see here is all based on 2D. If you go to my uh, YouTube channel, I have a video where I explain how to do that just with ZBrush and Substance Designer. Basically, I'm using Substance Designer as a compositing tool. Uh, those rendering have been done in Redshift, uh, textured in Substance Painter, Substance Painter again, and Substance Painter. So those have been done in Substance Designer. That was my last uh, Gnomon DVD and uh, rendered in IRA in Substance Designer. As you can see, there is not much difference in the rendering style between Redshift and IRA. IRA is basically an unbiased render, meaning it's well, you don't have to tweak too much of the parameter. Redshift is biased, but it's going in the right direction. So more rendering, more rendering, more rendering, and more rendering. So now for the interesting stuff, because you guys did come to see some Naughty Dog stuff, right? Let's start with the weapon. Today I will show you in a first time how we did use Substance Painter to prototype the multiplayer weapon. Some of the model you will see, or the texture style, might or might not be in the game at release time. Those were just prototyping. We did generate all of those render, uh, render style in like maybe two hours, just getting something quickly to be able to show it to the art director and let him decide if he like what we are doing or not. That weapon is from the single player. If you guys saw the E3, um, E3 trailer we put out last year, that gun was in it. We did texture it maybe like three hours, four hours before release of the trailer. I mean, before we did fin finalize the trailer. Same with the uh, AK-47. And that's a gun. So, let's have a look at what we have in Substance Painter. Okay, as I didn't mention before, we did use Substance Painter as, uh, as an help to, to prototype those guns. 
the final gun I've been done in Substance Designer. Substance Designer to do those guns will take a little bit more time because you need to be a little bit more neatly organized, which I'm never, I'm not very well organized. If you look at my graph, you will cry. And I really needed something quick and dirty to give an idea about what I want to do. To do this, I did mimic the same idea of what I would be doing in Designer. Basically, I have different materials that I want to combine together. So, doing that, I was able to grab the art director, bring him to my desk and be like, dude, what do you feel about that gun? Is that something we would want to put in game? Or that gun? Or here, we can have different type of material. Here, let's remove this one. Let's remove this one. So, Seven Spinter did really allow us to very, very, very quickly change the look of what we are trying to achieve. So let's move to another gun. I know I'm blazing through everything. I just want you guys to see the most of the stuff I want to show today. The shotgun. A lot of people ask me, why do I use Substance Painter now in our pipeline? We used to texture a gun like everyone else in Photoshop, right? A gun like that will take, I don't know, maybe a good day of texturing before we could put something in game and then we will spend uh, another day or two tweaking the texture, right? We work in a very fast-paced uh, fast environment. The, the way we work is we do a block mesh, we do the UV quickly on it, and we want to see it in game. We don't care if it's a final texture, we just want to get an idea, is the, the material working right with our lighting, does that fit with the character outfit? So the way we do it, I will actually show it to you. Uh, I will, I'm about to kill everything, let's kill that. The scratch. What am I looking at? I should be looking at. Let's kill here. Let's kill them. Kill of that. Kill of that. Kill of that. Kill of that. Okay. I start with a gun that have no detail, nothing on it. Right now, in the case of this one, I did grab the wrong uh, normal and the wrong AO. The little detail are in the AO, but we will ignore them for today. Let's say I want to put that game very quick, uh, that gun very quickly in game, right? Um, generally now we will spend an hour. For the purpose of today, I will have that asset ready to go in game in 10, 15 minutes at most. I will not put the amount of detail that I will put generally, but just to say, hey, let's put something in. I will actually grab some material from here. Let's see. Metal, no. Material, metal. No, iron. Let's see if there's something. Iron raw, iron rough. Let's start with the iron rough. So I already have my first pass. This one. What I also like personally with Substance Panda is like I can very quickly try and iterate. Like right now I'm looking for material, it's not my machine, I don't have my own material. I don't know which one to use. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Let's try this one. Then I can just go and kill the one I don't want. I do not like this one. I don't like this one neither. I will keep this one. Okay. Next step, I want another layer. Actually, I will use a smart material. Uh, there's one somewhere that I like, which is a steel gun. Steel gun that's somewhere here. Matte or let's go painted. So now I bring that on top. This one is supposed to always stay on top. That's what I use for my the hole on top of the gun. Create a black mask. No, I don't want to paint a mask. I'm too lazy. Add mask with color selection. Pick color. Here. Ah, oh, wrong one. Here. And maybe, uh, maybe this one here. So, then I will change uh, another material. Let's 
plastic armor plate or let's go with plastic armor plate same story add uh, a mask with a color color selection pick color here here I don't like the fact that the plastic is kind of smooth I will add another layer here that layer will be only for the height map I will grab some of the texture we have here let's see uh, texture procedural let's grab uh, let's grab this one No, 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 no. Okay, okay. I did something wrong. It's supposed to be a painter layer, a painting layer with no color, no rough, no metal, and just the height. And I did grab this one in the height. So now I will change the scale. And I already have something that show me what I want to do later in game. And then take the normal down here. The layer on the height. So it gives me a rough idea what I want to do. Uh, I might actually add another layer or just uh, grab this one, the black one here, change the color selection, pick color, and just make sure that the top look more interesting. And then again, I bring my wall on top. So I could almost put that gun in game right now. If it's not a hero I said people will not really care, but I never do that. We put it and then we go back and we polish, polish, polish. But let's say I want to add another layer of dirt, create a fill. Generally, when I create my dirt, I make it red at first. Change the roughness there. Add a mask with a generator. Add a black mask. I used to use a generator, but now we have those smart filter. Uh, those smart mask, sorry. New particle, where are they? They were there yesterday. Well, we'll just use a generator and uh, metal fiber mask builder. Okay, boom, a generator and mask builder. So now the fact that I didn't make raid allow me to see uh, what I'm doing a little bit better. I can come and look at the grunge, change the scale, look at the curvature. Change it a little bit. So, and now I can go back and change my color to some dirt here, something like that. So, is that gun perfect? No. But in the last 10 minutes, I was able to put a gun or an asset in game. So, the idea is not that uh, we can work quicker and we are done quicker. We are never done. Basically, instead of spending two days, three days texturing an asset, looking at it and realize that it's not what we want, we need more tweak, we spend an hour, two hours, put the asset in game, and the, the rest of the time that we will have used to create the text in Photoshop, we use it here to tweak, tweak, tweak until everyone is happy with the look. So, after the gun, let's talk about the vehicle. You guys saw the trailer, you know there is a Jeep, I'm not spoiling anything. You can drive the Jeep, the Jeep is a hero asset. The way we did build the Jeep, it's uh, the same way we do everything. We do a block mesh first. I did the block mesh of the Jeep. I gave it to a co-worker of mine in Q, with which uh, he did build the full model. When he was done, he did the texturing. Um, when I talk about iteration, you guys keep, you need to keep in mind, we iterate a lot on our asset. If you look at the size of the file of the Jeep, the Jeep is over one gig of texture. It's not mean everything is going in game, but we have all our iteration step. We put everything on separate layer. An asset like the Jeep, I will not want to work on it in Substance Designer because I would have node everywhere. I will not even know what I was doing three months ago. That's why we keep it in Painter for us. Keep in mind in our department, we are called technical artists. 
Meaning, we don't do texturing every day. Like environment artists, they do texture every day. They work with the tool every day. That's why they like to send designer for us. Today, I might be doing the rigging of the Jeep, which I did, all the dynamic aspect of the Jeep, which I did. Or I might be rigging a plant to have drag push the plant out of the way. And tomorrow, I might have a job with texturing landing on my desk. That's why I like to stay in planter, because even if I don't touch it for two, three weeks, I know where I am. I know exactly what to do it. It's like the tool don't change. It's very easy to not forget about it. So, the Jeep. The workflow with the Jeep is interesting because we have the Jeep, but the art director always want to have a little bit of paint over. They, they want to do, the concept artists want to grab our assets and paint over, add more scratch, more mud, tell us to remove the mud, tell us to add more. Generally, we give them a screenshot. Now we're able to give them a rendering. You remember at the beginning, I did show you all my render on the GPU, which I like to do. Now I can just come here, click a button. Uh, sorry, I forgot to mention, autographic view. For people like me that like to use a lot of stencil, you can use it a lot. Like you can just go back from autographic to uh, perspective. So I'm going, I'm going back to the rendering now. Do a lot of you guys do rendering? Raise your hand if you do rendering. You, what do you guys use? Like V-Ray, I-Ray, uh, uh, V-Ray, Mental Ray? Actually, in the time I did spend to ask you that question, the renderer was done. Dome. Cut the ground. Point, uh, minus point 0.51. Then uh, let's grab uh, let's grab something an environment map that look interesting. This one maybe oh, it's the same. Uh, where are they? Environment. Let's grab this one. So a render like that will take uh, in Mantel Ray or in V-Ray. I don't know to set it up to give a preview. I will say now maybe like. Between the moment I grab my material, I tweak my light, whatever. Yeah, I can do it quickly. It's far from being perfect, right? It's not a final render, but I'm able to give the person in charge of doing a concept art. Here you have a render, the lighting is correct. The material is reacting to the light the way it should. Uh, I think it's a great way of working. I can show you some vehicle rendering. Here that render took like uh, 20 seconds to do. Because I did nothing. That's the key. It's like, remember at the beginning I said I'm lazy? And you see it in my work. Like if you look at my video on YouTube, even my, my substance graph are very simple. I try to keep everything as simple as possible. It's not like I'm lazy. It's just like I don't have time to go in and think too much about that stuff. I want to get output. That render, I did nothing. I just did click array, move my camera, click render. Same here. Same here. That's for the turret truck, which I will be opening after that. Same here. Same here. All those renders have been done in Substance Painter. There is no Photoshop whatsoever. Even the post-processing have been done with uh, the Yibis uh, filter. Actually, you can see it. I like to use uh, glare. I put glare on everything. I put too much glare on everything, actually. Shotgun painter. Let's open uh, the turret truck. Actually, I will show you. Uh, a render in real time with the truck. The funny stuff is like people ask us a lot, our model, the model look detailed, right? The model look very, very detailed. I mean, look, the engine, you can go in. And there is no trick here. It's really the model that we have in game. The funny stuff is like, there is not that many polygons on that model. Let's go in display setting. 
euro setting and turn on the wireframe. We are super economists when it comes to the, the polycon of our asset. We only, we spend actually a lot of time on that. It's to make sure that we only spend the polygon where we need them. So as for the truck, same story. You come here, render with iRay. Take a little bit more time because there's more texture. And I can activa activate my post process. Um, I don't really need the anti-aliasing. In this case, since we are in IRA, I need to go in the IRA setting, look at the MDL material, which are here, and turn on my emissive, crank it up a little bit, just to make sure that the light is shining on the front of the, the light. Now I can use my favorite feature, which is the glare, and start to give a little bit more So, and I think in like something like, let's see how much time we need to get something acceptable. Uh, seven seconds. I will tend to let it run for like 15 seconds and be happy with it. And done, I'm happy with that. I can give it to the concept artist, he can do his thing. I don't care, I don't have to think about it anymore and I can move to something else. Now, something we do a lot, it's, uh, we want to see how our set will look in game before even putting it in game. Since we can change the, the IBL, what we do is like we get our lighting artists to generate an ambient light, light map from our level, from the game, from the lighting. We put it here. And if I turn on the post effect, and I get outside of Metal of IRA because IRA is obviously it's ray tracing, it's not what we have in game. If I go back to uh, 3D view, then turn that stuff off. Let's see here, environment opacity, but at 100, environment rotation blur is down. Let's turn on the shadow, let's put uh, intensive computation. So here we have roughly, if I do that, Oh, yeah. We are roughly at 95% what we will, uh, parity with what we will see in game if we use our own IBL. Meaning for us as, as artists, it's great because I don't have to go through the process of building the asset. Uh, I can just see what I'm doing. I put it in game and I'm, I'm very, very, very close to what I see in the viewport. So the shadow are a little bit expensive, obviously. So the other aspect, which is very cool with Substance Painter, or a Substance Designer for the matter, we don't care. I mean, in this case, we're in Substance Painter. I don't know if you remember at the beginning, I said we iterate a lot on our stuff. Uh, right now, the truck is green. It don't mean the truck will be green in game. The truck could be black, red. We never know. That's why we tend to uh, build everything in layer, keep our layer stack. Let's remove the dirt. Let's isolate the body. Ah, uh, not the turret, the body, 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 body. Uh, truck body, yeah. So, sorry. Ah. Okay, the truck need to change color, right? I can just go in and just change my paint. But generally, it's not only a color change. Color change, I don't care, it's easy. If I was in Photoshop, I could do a color change very easily. But what I could not do that easily in Photoshop, the roughness, because maybe now we want a truck that is super shiny. I mean, let me go uh, to the red toward the red. I like red more. And uh, maybe the dirt, we want a lot less dirt. Or maybe I don't even want dirt. So. Or maybe I want less dirt. Maybe, you know, it's like 
we can iterate for that at Vitam Internet. So, mm -hmm. let's see uh, mm -hmm. if we manage to do a quick gun. I did not plan to do it, but since I'm talking too fast today, I realize we have time. Let's do another gun. Mm -hmm. Let's do uh, this one. This one is a gun from uh, Victor Sullivan in game. So generally I open the asset, I look at it from every angle. Since I have IRA now, I still love to go in IRA and I'm like, uh, you know, I like to see my stuff in a good light. I'm looking at the gun and I'm like, yep, it's clean. I like the metallic, I like the render. So then I would say, let's kill everything and do it from scratch. I don't even know if I have the proper map for it, I mask, but we will see. Let's see, we will keep this one, we will delete the dirt. Uh, keep this one, delete this one. Delete this one, delete this one, delete this one. Delete this one. I think it's a good start. Uh, Let's make the gun more interesting. Let's start with a smart material. Here you see, you guys see me fumbling with the material. I'm like, what am I using? Because I don't know what am I using. It's not my material library. At work, if you come to my machine, you will see I have a 100, 150 smart material. Every time I create a layer stack that I like, I just save it as a smart material. Then we give them among each other. We are working in a team. We just share our smart material. We have a huge library. It's huge library of smart material. So let's grab uh, steel gun painted. This one is okay. Give us a good start. I will not do the gun chrome. I will make it black. Uh, let's go here. Obviously, when you use a preset, you never use a preset. We, you, you take the preset and you make it your own. Look at the scratch uh, edge wear. We make an older gun. That's cool. Can live with that. Then I need a wood. Uh, another smart material. Is there something I could use? Uh, no, I don't like this one. Maybe. Uh, let's see. Where's my you? Where's my shelf? Oh, my shelf is here. Okay. Let's use this one. Yeah, can live with that. Now, an interesting new feature that is in the in the current version, which I never used before, is for people that like to do a uh, hand painted texture. I don't really do it. I'm not really into hand painting. I try to hand paint as little as possible. But right now you have a, a smudge tool and a clone tool, which never used, but it's kind of cool. Let's see if we can uh, show you the, the smudge tool. Let's say I'm doing some type of dirt here. Let's see. Let's say I'm doing something like that, right? Can come with a smudge tool. I'm working with the mouse, that's why it looks like I'm using my left hand. Um, the pen is not really working for me today. And uh, you can smudge your texture, I guess. If you're into hand painting, it's really cool. And uh, they did add the clone brush, which is also very cool. Could be useful. Actually, I could see myself using the clone brush more than the smudge. Or maybe the smudge to touch up some dirt. Those tools are always nice to have. So obviously, I don't want a wooden gun. I will want to add a mask, add mask with color correction. And I realize I don't have a color ID map. Then I can do it. Now, what uh, solution do I have? I have many ways of doing it. I can uh, create a black mask and paint it white to reveal the wood. What? Oh, yeah. I can paint it white real there, it's boring. Uh, what else could I do? Uh, I could kill this one, keep it, and just uh, come here. 
and select by could select by UV, by polygon or by model. Let's see by model. Done. Right. I could probably do it by UV too. If I select it here, that that mesh is just one UV shell. If we look at the 3D, 2D, it's a, it's a UV shell. Select by UV. It's kind of cool. Actually, I'm lying to you because I tell you it's a, it's a shell, but it's not. Yeah. If I, I can select by UV, but then I will select only. What am I doing? It should not, it should not work if I select by UV. Yeah. If you select by UV, it's only select one side since only one side is on the UV shell. Okay, let's go back to uh, kill everything here. Make it black, black, make it white. Okay, uh, next step, what would I want to do? I have a black gun, some wood. Um, I really don't like those dirt. Let's see uh, if we can change that a little bit. By the way, something that is really cool, I just realized there is a button there. I never use it, but I'm assuming if I click on here, ah, there is no internet. Okay, it seems that if you click on it, it takes you to Substance Share, which I don't know if you guys use it, but I go there every day. There is a lot of cool material. Everything is free. I love it. You get uh, meshes, you get shader, you get surface, you get material, you get everything. I used to love that feature in Mudbox, but it died very quickly because everyone could post anything they wanted and you didn't end up having a lot of crap. Now here, it seems to they have a moderator that veto every material that get in, meaning everything that is there, I might not like it, but I know it's usable. I know it's working, which is very important. So let's go back to the gun. Uh, let's look at the steel gun painted and I'm looking at those scratch base material. Ah. Let's change the height a little bit. I don't like it too much. Uh, let's here. Let's see if we change this one. Or we'll leave it there. But it's, this one is too strong. So it's actually more interesting. And then as stuff go by, my coworker Brad might stop by and he's like, ah, I like the gun, but eh, why is that black? I don't like it. It's a beauty of Sessence Painter, right? I can uh, just go here and say like, okay, Brad don't like black on the gun. I will then turn, uh, what about that? I don't even know what it will look like, but yeah, it's actually better. It's look more like an older gun. And then we can still uh, go back and forth, right? And do it like that. So now if it's a multiplayer gun, I might want it to be a... Uh, you know what? I will not show you. I can, I can go like that for like days and days. I can click on material and add material. It's, it's boring. I just want you guys to realize that with Substance Painter, I, as an artist, can do a lot of iteration in a very short, short, short amount of time. So, at this point, do you guys have any question? How many of you guys use Substance Painter? You guys use a... <laughs> Sit down. You guys did try the new feature? Okay, you want me guys to, to go maybe a little bit more into the new feature? Okay. Uh, let's do it with, uh, I will do a recap of what I know it's in it. I will open the truck to do it. It's easier. It's more interesting. I can talk about IRA. The problem with IRA, it's a retro, it's a past, a past tracer renderer, right? If I put a gun in the middle of nothing, you don't really see a difference between IRA. And actually it's just to say how cool their OpenGL renderer is. It's very close to IRA. If you don't have stuff to reflect and bounce the light. That's why let's open the truck, it's more interesting. So what did they put new in there? And that uh, is just from my perspective as an artist, right? I started to use it like a couple of days ago. First, they changed the icon, which is really cool. I mean, I don't care. To be honest, I don't care. And if you see me right now clicking left and right, it's cool. I need my brain to adjust to those new icons. They are roughly at the same position, but I need to adjust. So they have the Substance Share website connection. I love it. It's great. Uh, generally, I check Substance Share one time a day. 
you know, in the morning I check what's new. Now I just go in, every time I'm in my, a new project, I just check what is there. That's one steps install website. I have no idea what it do. I never use it. I cannot even click on it because there is no internet. Uh, we just did check the, the, the smudge tool and the clone tool. Um, again, if you do stylized texture, I guess the smudge is very cool. If you do hand painted texture, if you hand paint your dirt, which I tend to do m less and less because we have our own generator, it could be very useful. Something that I like they did, it's uh, they did add uh, an orthographic view. And I don't know if it was there before, but I just realized it lately. The way I can navigate, let me try with that mouse because that's this one. Okay, I can snap to my view actually now. I see it's really cool. Uh, it's because I, okay, now I can snap and it's also working with perspective. So and the key I'm using is shift, alt, and uh, left click, it's probably somewhere else on another stuff. Okay, let's talk uh, further about what is there. Flow rotation, constant rotation, I think it was there before, I'm not sure. Constraint rotation, oh, because I need to click the button. Constraint is there, and uh, the free rotation is obviously from, from there. The constraint allows me to select the rotation point where I want it to rotate from. Then if I lose my rotation, I can just bring it back. I can, I can, I want to bring it back. So. Almost, okay, yeah, I got it back. So, and for me, the, the feature I would, can, I can see myself using it more and more, it's iRay. Not only because I, I, I would use it as a concept artist, but at the end of the day, I can give them a screenshot, right? They will be happy with the iRay render, but the screenshot is good enough. iRay is very cool for me as an artist. When I go home, I do my stuff, and I like the fact I can quickly check and see what am I doing. So render array. So you can go into the dome, you can change the radius, change the tissue scale, you can rotate your dome, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you need to be aware of the ground, you can move it by end. In my case, I know what size I need. 0.51 is the one I need. Uh, you have some feature in the MDL material. At this point, I always use this one, which I, if you look at the, the front of the headlight here, that one, it's not very uh, glowing. I can change it to change the emissive intensity, which allow me to not have to worry too much about the value in my shader. Uh, now, because I'm an artist, you guys are an artist, I'm not a salesman, I don't care if they sell or not. It's not perfect. There's still work to do on the array side, but for first integration, I'm very happy with what they give me. Uh, I remember bitching last week about, you know when you do a render with the array, if you, uh, you have a dome, obviously I can, solve with, I can save that image with an alpha channel. The problem is if I come here and start to play with the, uh, Let's see, reflectivity, and let's turn, crank the reflectivity. And tension the glossiness to zero. We'll see a little bit or here. Actually, it seems to be, oh, okay, it's reflecting. It's kind of cool, but it might affect my alpha channel and I will get the, the color of the IBL into my alpha channel. It will be terrible. So I did ask for a back plate. Obviously, they don't have time. They have to prepare GDC. They did not have time to create a backplate. At least they give me uh, the possibility to go here and put a clear color. And that, for me, illustrates the relationship we as a studio have with Algorithmic. They are very responsive to our, to our plight. You know, like if we ask for something, they will try the best. I saw yesterday people were not happy with some pricing or something like that. This morning, they did already change the pricing. But I'm like, it's mind blown. They really care about artists. I mean, 
I, I have contact with other company and it's not always, sometimes people look more like the, the broader picture. With them, we can go to them and be like, hey, I need that. And we tell them why we need it. Generally, we get what we ask for. So keep in mind, we ask for the finger. They give us the finger, I ask for the end. They give me the end, I want the arm. I would always want more as an artist. We always want more and more and more. They will never give us enough. Like I race rendering in like 10 seconds. Tomorrow I will be bitching because I want it to render in five seconds. Okay, at this point, I will be done with my talk.